Cruise manager actually came out and said that, you know what? Radio doesn't matter anymore and we don't need you. What the? <laughs> And if you are new to my channel, welcome. What I like to do is talk about anything and everything classic rock. Today, we're going to talk about what Motley Crue's manager actually had to say about radio and Motley Crue being on the charts. Motley Crue's longtime manager, Alan Kovac, said, you know what? Motley doesn't need to be on the radio anymore, and they don't need to place on the charts because simply, they just don't matter. And the guys can achieve everything that they need to without them. Yeah, guys, this is a super touchy subject, but I'm going there. Motley Crue's documentary, The Dirt, premiered on Netflix earlier last year, and it actually brought them to number one status, as well as bringing them to the top ten for the very first time in a decade. Streaming album and single sales also breathed new life into the crew, and at the same time also brought them a brand new demo and a brand new audience. This brings up the whole issue of Motley Crue's manager saying that the band doesn't need radio or the charts anymore. I totally get it. Listen, the bands that we are following from the 70s and the 80s today that we loved back then, they are not paying the bills from record sales. I totally get it. But come on, these bands do have to go on the road, go on tour so they can pay their bills and remain relevant. It is really amazing that Motley Crue had a quote unquote comeback from the release of The Dirt. To me, they were still there, even though they weren't on the road. And why were they still there to me and probably to you too? <laughs> you guessed it. Because we played them on the radio. There's hair in my mouth. Now after this summer's big ginormous tour for the crew and Def Leppard and Joan Jett and Poison is over and done with and the tour of 2020 fades into the background, who will still be keeping these bands relevant? Well, those of us who talk about, write about, and play their music. And of course, you guys who buy their music and listen to it. Totally ironic that this article was literally just released and this interview was just done by Motley Crue manager and I literally just moments ago launched my own internet radio station. <laughs> Kiki.fm. Take a listen. All the best classic rock and hair bands on the planet being played, uh, again, on Kiki.fm. That was totally a cheap plug for my radio station. Who happens to play Motley Crue? So, yes, of course, times have changed. The music industry has changed. Everything has changed. But I personally truly believe that both the old and the new can play together really nicely in the sandbox and they actually go great together. Just remember, Mr. Kovac, you still need my demo to buy tickets to the shows and let's face it my demo are still the people listening to the radio now let's think about the movie yesterday that was released this past year that's the movie where it was a whole dream sequence about what the world would actually be like if the Beatles didn't exist so what if Motley Crue's manager Mr. Kovac actually says you know what I don't want any radio stations or anybody playing Motley Crue's music ever again so yeah I think it would be okay for a little while, you would still have, you know, everybody who's downloaded their music and all of that and who still has their records. But I think after a little bit of time, who's going to talk about Motley Crue anymore? The DJs who don't play their music, the DJs who don't talk about their music, the DJs who don't talk about the news stories that are happening around Motley Crue. What do you think would happen then? I mean, we can all kind of guess what would happen. You know, you stop talking about somebody and they just kind of fade into the distance. This is not going to happen. And listen, this video is not intended to give off any bad vibes. I just think that, yes, yes, things have changed. Yes, streaming has taken over, but people still like the old way of doing stuff, and people still do like to listen to the radio. Isn't Sirius Satellite Radio like the biggest radio conglomerate on the planet? I, just a hunch, just kind of saying. So again, no bad vibes, but what I'm going to do is after I take this hair out of my mouth yet again, I'm going to have a Kit Kat, sweet cinnamon, Kit 
cat thingy. There's no salt in it. Listen, I couldn't find any candy with salt in it on the 90% clearance table at Target. And a woman really wanted to rip this bag of Kit Kats out of my hands, but I said, no, this is from my Motley Crue video because I just want to show that I am not salty at all about Mr. Kovac talking about how radio is irrelevant to Motley Crue and that they don't need it. I just want to show you and I'm going to take a bite. Uh, oh, it smells, it smells different. Mmm, it does taste like cinnamon. Yeah. Next holiday season, the sweet cinnamon Kit Kat. I do like the regular ones actually, but these aren't bad. Mm, they're good. They're good next year. I pick them up. So the moral of the story is, yes, I still love Motley Crue. And yes, I will still play them on my radio station. I will always love radio because that's how I met this guy. Hey, that's me. And that's how I had these guys. So yes, radio does have kind of a special place in my heart. What do you think? Radio, yay or nay? I don't know. I think something's gonna start here, but I love radio. What can I say? And I still do love Motley Crue. Guys, have a great day, a great night, a great weekend, a great everything. Please hit that subscribe button if you wanna hear some more demented stories about classic rock. And as always, remember, most importantly, to keep rocking.